Hey, welcome to the Perkins Wildlife Center at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I'm Harvey Webster, and today we're going to learn all about snowshoe hares. So for this edition of Creature Features, we're going to learn all about snowshoe hares. And I'm joined by wildlife specialist Amanda Theobald. And uh, Amanda, what's the difference between a rabbit and a hare? Well, there's actually several differences between hares and rabbits. Um, hares are larger. They have longer legs and feet and ears. And the big difference is when hares are born, they're born precocial. So they're born ready to go. They are born covered in fur and they have... Um, their eyes open and they're able to hop around a few minutes after they're born. And also they don't need to rely on their mother like ra rabbits do. Um, they only nurse about once a day and after four weeks they are on their own in the wild. Wow, that's really cool. I've seen baby cottontail rabbits and they're totally helpless when they're first born with their eyes closed and barely furred. Interesting. So I guess one of the really big differences is in their coloration and the changes that happen to the seasons. Can you tell us about that? Yes, so snowshoe hares change uh, the color of their fur by shedding it um, depending on the season. So what triggers that change is a change in date length. So as the days get longer they and the seasons go on, they change. So in the winter they are white to blend in with the snow and camouflage to um, survive from their predators and in the spring they start to turn more brown and in the summer they're completely brown so they blend in with the forest floor. Very cool so decreasing daylight in the late summer and early fall triggers the change to white Correct. and then the increasing uh, daylight in the spring so pretty soon here you know it's February but by March they should be starting to turn and maybe by ba May they'll be all brown again. Yeah it's cool. exciting to know that spring is coming when we see the hairs <laughs> changing. So one one important question is what's the status of snowshoe hares in Ohio now? Are they uh, are they common? Are they rare? They're very rare. Um, it was once thought that they were in the more, most northeast part of Ohio where mm -hmm. it snows and is the coldest, but unfortunately today their populations are extremely rare. Um, the Ohio Division of Wildlife tried reintroducing their populations in 1953 to 2007 several times, but they have been very unsuccessful. So what do they eat? They are herbivores, so they eat lots of vegetation, um, such as bark and twigs, fruits, veggies, um, clover, and buds, all different kinds of things they can find on the forest floor. So I guess the question, Amanda, is what are you feeding them here today? Uh, today we have some fresh fruits and vegetables, and we have some pellets. And also I have scattered greens around the exhibit. But when it's nice outside and there's leaves on the tree, we cut, like to cut fresh browse and um, branches for them to enjoy. And they've got those ever-growing incisor teeth that help them snip those branches so they can get the twigs and the nutrition they need. Well, thank you, Amanda. It's been fascinating learning about the snowshoe hare and its status in Ohio and all the cool things about it. And thank you for joining us for Creature Features, a production of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I'm Harvey Webster.